the Old Testament expression of the mind of God clearly delineates the, the purpose of God for our salvation. You can just write. Number one, brought us out, in bracket now, out of the world. Okay, brought us out. Number two, to bring us in, bring us in, right? In bracket, Christ, kingdom, glory. Number three, to give us the land, all right? Bracket open, the kingdom, comma, airship of all things. Number four, to dwell among us, bracket open, in us. And number five, to be envied and desired through us. There are people who feel comfortable not praying for weeks. I feel sick. I start feeling sick. A day, if I have not prayed enough, I start feeling sick. I start looking for what to do. I start looking for every opportunity to just speak in other tongues, do something ritual. Let me just worship in tongues. I, I just, I feel dead. You know, it's like, it's like a fish. Have you, have, have you ever seen a fish out of water? It regoes. Passing out, it can't live outside of water for 10 minutes. A fish can't survive outside of water for 10 minutes. It will die. It will die. And you find a child of God out of fellowship for one week and it's fine. You start wondering, are you genuinely born again? You find some do wicked things and they are, and they are cool. Their conscience is not working. Are you a child of God like this? You find no force, we we'll make the mistake immediately we're on our knees. Oh God. Oh God. I saw we come in and drink water, clean their mouth, wipe their face, watch movies. As though nothing, as though nothing happened. You, you mean you do wickedness and you're fine? No, the nature of God can be fine with sin. No, no. The nature of God can be at rest with sin, with error. I'm telling you. Except that nature has been subdued by the human nature, suppressed. In you by the human nature. You have to understand that the, the nature of God that we have received is a supplanting nature. All right? I'm sure you, you, you should by now have the... Um, um, the, the meaning of supplanting in different places in your notepads. I've, I've, I've explained that many times. I've read that from dictionaries of, of different types to you. Supplanting. To displace, dispossess, dislodge, replace by reason of superiority and quality and all that. All right? So the nature of God is a supplanting nature. All right? But you see, even though it is a supplanting nature. It takes the word of God to be active and alive in your heart for that to happen. I would like these things to make your quotes, please. Even though the nature of God which we have is a supplanting nature, it takes the word of God to be active and alive Okay, for that supplanting nature to be in force in your human spirit and in your life, to be in force. You have to understand there are things that trigger the life nature. There are things that trigger the life nature. Uh, so the, the, the nature of God, okay. Not the life, not the nature of God. There are things that trigger the nature of God. Like he says, there is hope for a tree when it is caught. At the scent of water, it shall sprout. So 
So the nature of God we have received is only um, triggered, set loose when the word of God is in, is in force, when the word of God is active and alive in your life. It's a lot to explain. But you have to understand this. The life and the nature of God which you receive at new birth was communicated to our spirit by the word of God through the Holy Spirit. All right? The life and the nature of God which you received at the new birth was communicated to our spirits by the word of God through the Holy Spirit. Do you understand that? So, the life and nature of God are in his word. Do you understand that? And then, at the new birth, the Holy Spirit releases that word into our spirits. Releases that word into our spirits. And then it is broken loose to start reproducing the life and nature of God in our lives. Do you understand that now? It says, um, being born again, hallelujah. You understand that now? First Peter chapter 1, verse 23, right? Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible, by the word of God that lives and abides forever. Is that correct? Okay. So, being born again, First Peter 1, 23, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, we live it and abide it forever. So, we are born again. We are regenerated by God's word. But the agency that effects the regeneration is the Holy Spirit, or the agent, please, not the agency, the agent that effects the regeneration is the Holy Spirit. So he takes, he is called the Spirit of Truth. So he takes that seed of God and plants it in your spirit. Do you get that now? Plants it in your spirit and then suddenly because it tells you that the, logo, the, the seed is the logos of God. So the, the logos of God that gave birth to us is a seed. So the Holy Ghost plants it in your spirit and then it bursts alive with the life and nature of God in your spirit. Do you understand that? But you see, it will remain. Mm. I, I, I have a statement I want you to take note of when you are done with this. Can I go ahead? Okay. The best things of our spirits, the best things of our spirits are expressed. Through our minds. The best things of our spirits are expressed through our minds. The best things of our spirit. So, did, did you get that? Now, let me say something to you. The, the life and nature of God we receive, we receive them into our spirit, into the human spirit. It is the human mind that, that transports that life from our spirit to our bodies. You have to understand that. If it's not communicated from the spirit to your body, you will not find the effect of eternal life on your human body. If it's not communicated from your spirit to your body, you will not find the effect of eternal life in your human body. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can I, can I say something else quickly? Okay, maybe you should finish with that. Let me say this to you by the Spirit of God. Hello. Are you still here? Beautiful. Hear me. The word only becomes flesh to the extent your mind is renewed. Never forget that. The word only becomes flesh 
to the extent your mind is renewed. Did you get that? It says, and the word, the word, right? The word is spirit. The word is spirit. It says, um, the word is spirit. I've told you that a couple of times. The word is spirit. Okay? It says, the word became flesh. So the Spirit will give me an understanding earlier. He says, the word which is in your spirit only becomes flesh to the extent your mind is renewed. How? Now listen carefully. It is a renewed mind that receives the word from your spirit. Are you getting it? That receives the word from your spirit positions it in your consciousness as a revelation which you speak to effect a physical change. I'll go back to it until you get it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Just hear this. This is very important to me and to you. Hear this. Hmm. My God, you know, one of the reasons I'm so thankful right now is that um, um, a lot of truth and thoughts are coming to my spirit that I didn't plan to say and are very precious to me. They are, they are forming um, a, a huge um, um, uh, introductory portion of this meeting. That, that are good enough for messages to be taught in many places. And I'm, I feel grateful to God for that. Because we haven't even started the message. And yet these things are just coming. I haven't started the, 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 the message on the fullness of Christ. And yet these things are just so big. They are really very big. I can tell you that they are very big. Now look at it. Now hear this carefully. Just wait a moment so you can understand it. It says, what said the scriptures? The word is nigh thee in thy mouth and in thy heart. All right? The word of faith, which is here, Romans 10, verse 8. Look at it. But what said it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, referring to your spirit. That is the word of faith which we preach. Okay? Now, in this place, is Rema, not Logos. So, please just watch this thing. We receive the Logos into our spirit. Right? As we meditate the Logos, it produces a Rema. Never forget that um, Rema is a cutout of Logos. I told you that before now. You, you don't get Rema from the TV or from any other information. Rema comes from the Word of God. That's, we should know that by now. All right? It's a specific word that has its roots from Logos. For example, if God tells you, when God said to you, um, um, your future has become a vineyard of red wine, where will you trace it? The scripture, the logos. You can't trace it from the newspaper. Are we clear? Because Rema, it's a revelation from logos. Hallelujah. Do you, do you understand that now? Okay. I'm trying to complicate a thought that I don't have written down. So that's why I'm trying to say that you, you give me your attention to get it. Now, this is it. So the truth is in your spirit. And you see, your spirit is born of God. So the truth doesn't have any, doesn't, it's not needed to do anything to your spirit because it's born of God. So your spirit doesn't need the truth, actually. It's just where it must come to because the Holy Spirit lives in your spirit. Do you understand that? You don't need the truth for anything in your spirit other than it's there for, 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 for information's sake. God comes to your spirit, not to your head. So truth is deposited to your spirit. Now, the mind is the information processing center of the human person. Do you understand? So the mind must receive that truth from your spirit. See, the mind is in the human spirit. It's not here. This is the brain. The mind is not here. The mind is in your spirit. Listen, man 
um, in, 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 in rightly dividing man, you understand that man is a spirit. He has a soul. He lives in a body, right? These are the faculties of man. But by division, you have the outward man and the inner man or the inward man. Isn't that what the Bible tells you? He says not the outward man, but the inward man of the heart. That's what Peter described, right? He says not the adorning of the outward man. When he was talking about the women being subject to their husbands, all right? He says it's not the adorning of the outward man, of the braiding of hair and of the wearing of gold. He said, but the adorning of the inward person, inward man, all right? He called it the inner man of the heart. That's what Peter calls it. Peter calls it the inner man of the heart, right? Then Paul calls it the, the inward man. Paul said, though, he says, so the outward man perishes. Yeah, the inward man. Do you see that? The inward man. This is the inward spirit. He says the inward man is the new day by day. So who is the inward man? The inward man is your spirit and your soul. That's the inward man. Your spirit and your soul. All right? The outward man is the body and the nervous system. That's the outward man. The body, the nervous system. And you, you, the brain is what communicates the information of the nervous system to the body. Can I, can I give you a little division for that? So what you have, you have the body, all right? The brain, the nervous system. The body, the brain, the nervous system. So the brain is the middle man between the body and the nervous system. Do you understand? So the brain takes information from the nervous system and communicates it to the organs of the body. So that's why brain damage will lead to paralysis because the information from the nervous system is no longer communicated to the body. All right? So you have the body, you have the brain, you have the nervous system. Are you getting it now? That's the outward man. The company of the outward man. Then the inward man is the spirit, the mind, and the soul. So what the mind is to the inward man is what the brain is to the outward man. So the brain, the mind is not in the brain. The mind is in the soul because the mind is a spiritual entity. The brain is a physical organ. Do you understand that? The mind is a spiritual entity. The brain is a physical organ. If you cut the brain open, you will not see the mind. No, no. Because a lot of... I, I had to go to dictionaries. The best dictionary definition of the brain from the American uh, Institute of, of Doctors, I had to go through it. The brain is not the mind. It's not the mind. The mind is in the brain at all. Not there at all. I have the definition of the brain and the mind in my book. But I'll be like deviating too, too much from this message. So that you see that there are two different things entirely. There are definitions in my book. What the brain is, what the mind is. Listen. You have to understand this. When a man is in coma, the brain still functions. The mind is not functioning. Because the mind is for information processing. The, the brain is for, is for nervous activities. That's why some say the man is in a coma. He can't process any information. Can you hear me? He can't process, but the brain is still working. Because if the brain stops working, it will die. So if the mind was in the brain, if a man is in a coma, the mind should also be working just as the brain is working. But they are not two. They are two different entities. So what the brain is to the outward man is what the mind is to the inward man. So the mind belongs to the spirit realm. If, if you find that a bit hard to accept, wait until we go to the, the message compartmentalizes itself. Because I'm doing an extensive work on the mind. 
like never before. So they are not the same thing at all. So where is my mind? My mind is here. It's here where my spirit is. Where's my brain? My brain is here. So many times people say, mind is not true. Mind is not here at all. This is just the brain. It's not true at all. This is the brain. And in the brain you have all those, those thalamus, hypothalamus, or whatever you call them, that's all you have there as a brain. Now, if the mind were in the brain, when the man dies, he should lose self-awareness. And you know that your sense of self-consciousness is, is in the soul, not in the brain. Brain is for body consciousness, not for self-consciousness, body consciousness. That's what you call about the five senses. The five senses are the things in the brain, the five senses. Have you noticed that when it is beyond the brain, man doubts his existence. If it's beyond the five senses, it becomes something to argue about. That's why the brain can the brain can relate where the mind, uh, where the where the where the spirit is. The brain can can relate God, relate with who God is, where God is. All of that information is completely from the mind. From the mind. You no, know, it's it's supposed to be very very simple. Okay, but I I, I would I would not want to um, be given to that temptation of taking you too far now. Amen. You know, because um, a lot to teach, but at the same time, we find that we get tempted sometimes to, to touch things that are not for the immediate. Hallelujah. Glory to God forevermore. Mm. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Thank you, Lord Jesus. They're just here. Thought, mind. I'm trying to pick for you where. Mm. Okay. Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, we, should, we should not be here. We should not be here. It's too extensive. And if I start it now, I want to be here. And I don't want to do that. Okay, because the, uh, what, what led me to, 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 to the blessing of Staying on, more on the mind was the American um, uh, medical dictionary about the brain and the mind. It, it, it was a lot and we had to pull out what we need to pull out. So I'll leave that for another day, okay? Because it's, it's a temptation I'm almost giving into right now, but I would, I'll be displeasing the Lord for, in doing that. For example, the mind is an intangible spiritual entity and only God's word can shed light, the best light on it. Is the faculty of mass reasoning and thought. It holds the power of the imagination, recognition, appreciation, and is responsible for processing feelings, emotions, resulting attitudes and actions and all that. Then thought is the creating. So you see, I can be reading and be messing up things for you. And so let's leave it for another day. It can be interesting, but I would have missed them. I would have, I would have, I would have um, um, frustrated the grace because the grace is for the fullness of Christ not for the differentiating between the brain and the mind. Hallelujah. Beautiful. So, the word becomes flesh to the extent the mind is renewed. Is that clear? So, it is the mind that takes the information from your spirit. All right? From your spirit processes the information because it's the information presenting center to make a confession. Are you getting it? To make a confession. And it is the confession of the truth that becomes flesh. 
The change does not happen in the natural as long as it's not in your mouth. Please don't forget that. The change does not happen in the natural as long as it's not in your mouth. For ye are justified by the word of your spirit. Is that what it says? <laughs> you are born again by believing Jesus. No. The Bible tells us in, in Matthew you had that there were those who believed and didn't confess and they couldn't be saved. So he said, if you believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus, are you there? And confess with your mouth that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So when you believe a truth, you are not different from the devils. Because he says the devils also believe and what? Tremble. But they don't confess. So believing the truth is good. Confessing it makes all the difference. Believing the truth is good. But confessing it makes all the difference. Oh boy, hallelujah, glory. All right, people, so let's really finish with this um, 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 levels of God's will for salvation as we journey into the fullness of God because it's related, okay? Why, why do we have to do that? Because we, the, the, the focus of this or the goal of this was about having a motivation for spiritual growth. And, and that's what Christ's fullness is about. That's what Christ's fullness is about. Spiritual growth. Once you start having the, the passion, perspective, and judgment of Christ, I'll share that with you as the goal of Fullness of Christ, okay? So, um, why not just speak in other tongues in, in 60 seconds? Set the time for 60 seconds. Shako bradi salaman gradistos. Maliko salaman gradistos. Liko man de glei salaparadigos from prodimos. Salaman to rabababababoko shila mande. Keiso son jalapara glas to montrago. Lapo Salamanto Reggae by Controli Laco Brando Sacradigo Racomento Pagradisto Fragadima Melo Casca Brados Cofrediga Labas I Jocrano Bella Stone Shake Bahatisus is a day of vengeance of our God is a day of vengeance of our Lord Le Masata. Je le barre ma cosi yale le ma sofa e barabashia My Lord Jesus I worship you now in all circumstances in all circumstances in all circumstances. You know why? Because power has come to govern them. And so as we govern them, we just go ahead and say, My Jesus, you're so good to me. In all circumstances. In all circumstances. In all circumstances. Father, you've been so good to us in all circumstances. Oh God, in all circumstances, in all circumstances. Holy Ghost, you've been good to us again and again in all circumstances. Oh God. Ele basse malalabash. Ele é in all circumstances. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This day I've entered into my dominion in Christ. 
In December, we had a visitation on Christmas Day. And I said, the grace called Dominion has come. And I pledged for that encounter, I pledged $3,000 to give to the Lord. And so I wrote it down, kept it in my record to give to the Lord. Days ago, he says to me, give it to Kenneth Copeland, Benny He. So I gave those to $1,000 each. I said, who would I give this thought to? He says, give it to Oyedebo. I want to give it to Pastor Chris. He said, no. Now, that means something is wrong with it. it just, this is just of God. So he says, he said, because what is Oyedebo's um, publication called? Dominion publication. He said, give it to him. He speaks dominion a lot. I'm telling you. Because when I pledge, I don't just give it until I get direction who to give it to. So that's the something you can, you can have just money just hanging in places. So I gave it, I sent it to Kenneth Copeland. He said, because he has financial dominion. He said, Ben him because he has had power over nations, these crusades. Then we say he has had dominion over poverty. Can't you see it? Look at where he's coming from. Small but great. So we have in TGN a grace called dominion. But now in June, we have entered into our dominion actively. This is no longer legally. Because we enter legally in Christ, the day we got born again. But actively, we have entered our dominion in Christ over all things. For the exhibition. For the exhibition of all the fullness of God, his kingdom. <laughs> Hey, the world's about to quake. The world's about to quake. You see, while I was getting ready for this meeting, I was listening to my hair before the mirror, and I heard the word at my feet. It says, that's Open National. Open National, the word at my feet. I, I, I told someone to take note of that earlier. The word at my feet. That's what the unbossmanship is about. With this that God is telling me, the word is indeed at my feet. And not just me alone, but all of me, me and my children, because it's always about us, the word at my feet. So you see, you come to New York to, see that, to, to visit Arabic National, that headquarters there, and you find the word at my feet. And so that writing will have a design attached to it, the word at my feet. The world is in trouble. The devil is in trouble. He's finished. Hallelujah. Psalm 66, everybody. Hallelujah. <laughs> but you know, I asked the Lord before now, when, if he says a moth of power, because he had hinted at it, I said, what, what type? Is it Kratos? Is it Exusia? Is it Dunamis? I need, I need to be sure because Jesus said you shall receive dunamis after that the Holy Ghost is come. I have given you all my power and authority. It says, uh, I've given you the authority to, to tell most things. So that, that's exousia. So what you have in, in Luke 10, 19 is exousia. Or I won't have Acts chapter 1 verse 8 is dunamis. Okay? Okay. So I, I was asking, if, if it's a moral power, what power? But look at the scripture. The scripture tells you it's Kratos. <laughs> <laughs> Say unto God, because Kratos is of the Father. Of course, the Son can exhibit Kratos. Okay? Dunamis of the Spirit, Exusia of the Son. Of course, they can also play with these things. But Jesus, He says, All authority, all power in heaven and earth has been given unto me. You shall receive Dunamis when the Holy Ghost is come. And then He says, God is the only potentate to whom be all the Kratos. So Kratos is the father. The son can exhibit Kratos, of course. So it's a moth of Kratos. Not just Dunamis. Not Exousia. It's Kratos. I told you Kratos is the power of creation. It's the power, it's the, it's the power that creates. Then I said Dunamis is the power that maintains it. Exousia establishes the legal framework. The permission for the exercise of Dunamis. I told you all that. <laughs> if you can't remember, then remember now because I told you before. <laughs> okay, Kratos creates. 
Dunamis maintains, renovates, Asocia establishes the legal environment, the permission for the exercise of Dunamis. In God, in three persons, glory to God, blessed Trinity. So let's, it's a moth of power, people. Hey, hey, glory to God. Now listen, like I said, it's not power. Um, to destroy people. Because the context is clear. Verse 3 again. Say unto God. Now, it cannot, it cannot be say unto TGN. <laughs> say unto RPN. Say unto good lifers. How terrible are thou in thy works? Now, now, let, let me mark this. Let me, let me say this to you. This will be said of us in years to come. Nations say, how terrible are you people? Because we have the prophets that say, they will say, use our land, just let us live. <laughs> These things will happen. God is consistent in his, in his purpose. God is consistent in his purpose. He's consistent. Glory to God. Now verse 30, people, say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. Through the greatness of thy power shall thine enemies, you see that now, enemies, submit themselves unto thee. So power that commands submission. I told you, in case you, you, you were not in that meeting, um, a night before I came in, I said, power commands obedience, submission, and willingness. It commands obedience, submission, willingness. It makes willing. Power makes willing. It says in the grace of your power, in the day of your power, the people shall be willing. And then it says, a great multitude of the priests were obedient to the faith because the power of God was in display. Amen. So, you, you find that as you, as you operate this power of God, now remember, you have to understand the, 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 the equation. It is fullness of Christ, fullness of God, fullness of power. So don't forget that. So the power we are talking about right now will be in full force as you attain to the fullness of Christ, as Christ is formed Mofao, we, we are about to talk to you about Mofao and schema in a moment, okay? So that you can understand all of that, all of that in just a moment. Hallelujah, glory to God. So, verse 3 again, say unto God. Imagine, you know, just, I, I said, the power to control circumstances is the goal of fullness of Christ. Circumstances. You come to your child, your child is, is taken of a devil. And then your, your boys start talking rough. Start talking rough. Rather than saying, ah, what happened to you? Are you okay? What's the matter with you? You just know that this is not my child. And say, you devil of darkness, go from him. And the child falls under the power and he's crying, dad, I'm so sorry. Say, no, it's not you, son. Not you, son. That happened to Benny's son. But started talking rough. I don't say, you devil of darkness, I was gone. Think about the, the, the resurrection power as Kratos. <laughs> Think about that. Resurrection power. Glory to God. Resurrection power. No, just think for a moment. A life where there are no losses. Nothing is broken. Nothing is damaged. That's living above this realm of life. And that's what God has his mind set on. So that was always in the mind of God at our salvation. Because I said the, the fifth level of the of, of, of gospel of our salvation is that he be glorified and envied in us. Admired. 
and we read it, the, the, the prayer of Paul, you find that it's a parallel request, a parallel desire. My little children for my I have been built to Christ be formed in you. Other translations put it verbally. You know, so I had to rearrange the translation. One says, until the Messiah takes shape in you. Then the biggest of them says, until people can look at you and see Christ. <laughs> you know, so I had to put them in order. He says, I'm praying until people can look at you and see Christ. People can look at you and see Christ. Now listen, until Christ, I'll use the Greek terms now that, in, that may interest you, until Christ is more foul in your spirit, he can be schema in your body. Amen. <laughs> I told you, I just wanted to just get your attention a bit. But we'll get to that. Don't worry. That's the, more like the next line of thought. And then we just have the meeting wrapped up here quickly. Whoosh. Verse 7, Psalm 66. Please don't go spell foul like <laughs> F-O-W-L. <laughs> more foul. <laughs> it's a more foul. Please. <laughs> not, not that skin. Not the other guy. <laughs> Verse 7 now. Welcome to the moth of power. Welcome to your dominion in Christ over all things. Welcome! Hallelujah! Glory to God. Woo! Shalaman gradisco paradiscus. Look at it. Verse 7. Mm. He ruled by his power forever. Not occasionally. So you have entered your, re your, your realm of ruling by that same power forever. He ruled by his power forever. His eyes behold the nations. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. You see that? That's Psalm 66 verse 7 now. He ruled. Now listen, listen. People, I want you to, I want you to, to have a reason to hold fast to this. If God rules by his power, how else do you expect to rule? No, no. What other means do you rule? If God, the Almighty, who is over all and in all, rules by his power. You see why the church is defeated? They don't see the value of power. Even God rules by his power and then the church wants to rule by fasting. They want to rule by the blood. God is not ruling by the blood. The church wants to rule by the blood. Look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. The Bible tells us how that Jesus was baptized of the Spirit of God and went to the wilderness and returned in the power of the Spirit. And his fame spread abroad. When he returned in the power of the Spirit, his fame spread abroad. And the church wanted their fame to spread abroad by evangelism or by new programs. By guidance, uh, music uh, uh, artists, 20 artists in two days program. They want, they want the church to bust that way. Check the days of the apostles if that was how the church busted. If that, if that, was, if that was how the explosion happened. It was the power. Peter said we'll give ourselves to prayer. And the midst of the word, next in tells us the hand of the Lord was upon them and great much of high priests were obedient to the faith. Much of the priests, power, power, power. Power is the language the adversary understands. Not knowledge, power. Are you still here? Power. You can't just sit down there and expect things to happen without power. No. In Luke chapter 4 verse 14, after Jesus had gone to fast and pray. Because you see, you have to ask where shall power be found. First of all, it, it is communicated by God's will, by God's choice, by God's sovereign choice. And it, it becomes, it's, it's activated in your life. 
as you become dead to flesh. The more dead you are, the more powerful you become. You die in place of fasting and prayer, in place of fellowship. Place of fellowship. As where you mingle with power. You mingle fully with power in place of fellowship. You, you, become, you become alive to God. You become dead to the world, dead to the flesh, and alive to God in place of fellowship. Quickly. Oh, boy. So in verse 14 in Luke chapter 4, it says here, And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. Huh. You see that? He returned, Luke 4, 14, quickly listen to me. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. Fame went out through his power. Then, you know, we just sit down there and want things to happen just like that. That's Luke 4, 14. Watch something carefully and be active in this meeting. For your good. Then you find chapter 5, same book of Luke. I want to just show you something about power and how that the, 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 the relationship that cannot be changed or, or um, what's the word for it now? Um, you, you can't... Um, there's no um, easy way out of this relationship. It's, it's power and prayer or prayer and power. They go hand in hand. All right? You, you, you can't manipulate God to just have the power without dying in place of prayer. It's, it, it's not possible. Okay? He went to fast and pray and he returned the power of the Spirit. That's number one. I just want to watch something about the connection, the relationship. Then in chapter 5, same book of Luke, I want to show something quickly from verse 15 to 17. It says, But so much the more went there a fame abroad of him, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of the infirmities. Then look at the next verse. Look at the next verse quickly. And he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. Hey, are you listening to me? That's verse 16. He withdrew and prayed. Look at verse 17. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the Lord sitting by which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Did you see that? He had gone to pray. Power was present. You see that? Okay. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Chapter 6. Chapter 6, same book. Verse 12. And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. Did you see that? Jesus. And when it was day, he called unto him his disciples, and out of them he chose twelve, whom also he named apostles. How do you choose your leaders? By appearance? By how they give? He went out to pray all night the next day. He, so what was he doing with God? Oh Lord, you have given me a crowd. Among them, who have you chosen to be my disciples or my apostles? Do you spend time in prayers? Are you seeing a life of prayer? In chapter 3, he was praying, heaven opened, and the, the, the Lord spoke. Chapter 4, he went to pray, power was, for, was, was generated. Chapter 5, he prayed, power was there to him. Chapter 6, he went all night to pray. You just look at Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. You can keep going and going and going, you'll be sure. And then you move to chapter 7, you find him in another place of prayer. Chapter 8, then chapter 9, tells the one that was praying, and his fashion changed. This time around, he began to reflect on his body as the apogasma of God. So don't just say it's a month of and that's all there is. No! When God said it's a month of 
It came out of God's mouth and it shall not return to him void as a rhema. But you become a carrier of that power as you die in place of prayer. That power becomes alive, active and alive as you die in place of prayer. Because for, for a, a, a conductor to be charged, it has to be plugged. You, you plug it. The, the power bank has to be charged. Power, uh, if it's not a, 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 um, a, a power source of its own, as a power instrument, it has to be charged. If it's not a generator of power, it has to be charged. You understand that? If not a generator of power, it has to be charged. And we do the charging in the place of prayers. Like it says, beating up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. As, um, you have that in Jude 20, right? Beating up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. He said, Be ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. You build up. What is he saying? He said, Charge up yourself like a power bank, like a power, a power career. You speak in tongues, speak in tongues, speak in tongues until the power of God starts to permeate every fiber of your being to the strands of your hair, to the outfit you wear until they come and say, virtue has left me. So the month of June is not just a month of prayer to walk in dominion, it's also a call to prayer. Not just a month of power rather, it's also a call to prayer. And then we we'll move this to, to July. This spirit we are carrying into July and it must to come. This nature, habit, way of life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's a month of power. It's a time to walk in our dominion in Christ over all things. Like he says, and he shall have the dominion. So we have come into our dominion in Christ. Dominion over all things. And we will not stop until God is exhibited in his fullness. Until the kingdom of God is, 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 is having the reign of things. Until the court of God's kingdom becomes the prevailing influence over every man we come in contact with. Court of God's kingdom. We will not stop. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, glory. Hallelujah, glory. It's a month of power. I said we will not stop until the fullness of God is palpable and tangible in the earth. Until the kingdom of God is amongst men and in men. Until God is fully repositioned in the consciousness and priority of all flesh. We will not stop. This power will not diminish because we will keep praying. Until the new heavens and the new earth wherein dwells righteousness is established. We will not stop. We will not stop. We are going to give this power full expression. Hallelujah glory. Oh, really?
worship Him. What is the love? And I was led. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh God. Glory to God. Ah, you're so worthy, Lord. Worthy. You're so worthy, Lord. Worthy. Awesome God. And I was new. Why not sing glory to God? Glory to God. Oh, oh God. Glory to God. Oh, you are faithful, God. Oh, you are faithful, God. Oh, the Our God is mighty. We lift up your name, our God, cause you are holy. Our God, we sing in again, all honor and glory. In adoration, oh, bow before your throne. For we exclaim, for we exclaim, our God, our God is mighty. None like you, lift up your name. For you are, for you are holy. Oh God, we sing it again, all honor and glory, oh Lord, in adoration, oh bow before your throne, in adoration, all bow before your throne. We worship you for all you are doing. We love you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So, go, just could go ahead right now and, and give your offerings, okay? Give your tithe, your festival, specify which one you're giving. And then, if you're participating online, just go ahead. It is on your screen. Go ahead and give the Lord. You know, you honor the Lord with these things. This is honor the Lord with your substance, not with your mouth, not with your lips. So, just go ahead and, and offer all of them to the Lord right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And while you're doing that, please, so much has just happened, right, that I may not be telling everything. But I want to just, as an act of faith, just... Touch my palm as an out of faith. Just touch my palm. Just touch my palm. My palms, rather. Just touch them as an out of faith. Thank you, Father. But while you put these hands right now, going forward, those palms of yours, just put them on anything you want to put them. You will feed the power of God through them. Miracles will happen. Put them on your loved ones, sick people. Just touch people with these palms going forward. They will cast out devils. You meet people that are filled with devils. You talk with them. The power that makes them will command their obedience. You make contact with their bodies. Be, the devils will go. It's a new commission you have just received right now by the Holy Ghost. And no disease will resist the anointing you're carrying right now. Nothing will resist them. I give them to you freely in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Saints, 
we can't really quantify how much God has blessed us. And I can't exhaustively express to you right now the things God has shown me or told me. But just know that we have entered into a life of dominion and we will never come out of it. And don't forget also that in December, the grace called dominion actually came to rest on us. Okay? And now, we have entered the month of power and dominion is activated. Listen, our life will surprise the whole world. I'm telling you. The whole world will tremble at the feet of Christ because of us. I am not saying it in secret any longer. Those who don't like it can do whatever they choose. But just know that the whole, the whole world, we, 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 we grow up about asking, who are these people? You know, the Bible tells us when Herod heard of the deeds of the apostles, he became troubled and he began to ask questions. And he said, this must be John whom I, whom I beheaded. John is back from the dead. Because to them, only people from the dead can do such wondrous things. And then he desperately waited to see Jesus so that he could see some miracles. The Bible tells us Herod longed to see Jesus. God spoke to us in prophecy. He said to me and, and to us, he said, the whole world will hear you and obey you. Listen, this is the beginning of that prophecy. Because the power that commands submission, obedience, willingness has come. And whether they like it or not, they will embrace the kingdom of God. They will live out the culture of the kingdom of God. Whether they like it or not, listen, their loftiness will be humbled. Their hardness will be bowed low. Whether they like it or not, those who murmur will learn doctrine. Those who edit will come to understanding. The ears of the deaf will hear the book of the Lord. The, the blind eyes will see out of obscurity. Whether I like it or not, a young man will, will love righteousness, learn righteousness, do righteousness. They will embrace God in his fullness. Power is not for negotiating. It's for commanding obedience. So God hasn't called us to negotiate with darkness. To negotiate with governments. We are not here to negotiate. We are here to insist on the reign of God and his kingdom. This is not time for human right. This is time for owner's right. Human right activist is time for owner's right, not human right. You may... You may you may fight about it. You may complain about it. In the long run, when you see what we have saved you from, that through the use of power we've saved from the wrath to come, you'll be grateful we didn't give up on you. You'll be grateful we didn't regard your fight for human rights. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Blessed be your name forever. We give you all the praise for this month of power, dominion, Blessed be your name, Lord. We bow in worship for everything and for all things. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift his hands and give you peace. May the Spirit of God keep you preserved in this realm of power. May he hear John every side that you're not, you're, not, you're not able to find your way out of power. May he put in you a hunger for power. And may that power increase in every measure. May your life become a definition of the power of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. The love of God be with you. The fullness of the flesh will be with you. Be with your spirit, your soul, and your body. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Congratulations to you and to us. It's a time to celebrate and rejoice in God's goodness. You will testify every day of what the power is affecting in your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And now don't forget, we need to live for long to manifest this power. 
And you know, it's not just about having power alone. You also have to understand that there are things we must do, all right, to sustain the, the power of God. One of such is bodily exercise, okay? It says bodily exercise profits for the now. I told you before, it's not later, it says, for the now, it says. Then it says God the profit for the now and the later. So, hey, go back to this discipline. Some days ago, I found that I, I was struggling with myself. And I felt like, oh, fatigue, fatigue. But then by spoke, I just felt like, I just felt in my spirit, no, 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 just why not stretch a little? You find that this is not got fatigue. This is um, um, air condition and fan causing some of these feelings you are having. And I just went on to stretch and exercise for a while, do some push-ups, do some all of this, whatever you call them, you know, just gave my body some minutes. And I felt very strong and alive again. And I felt light, you know, so just... It's important if you, if, you, if you keep exercising, you find that you, even as you grow older, you feel lighter. You feel lighter, it's true. So please go back and burn the fat you've gathered in places that you don't need. Not just walking about. That's just to keep the heart pumping faster. You need to exercise the body. Do some exercises, you know. A host of them. Thank God for, for the internet. You can find a host of them, the good ones. The good ones. The, of course, they have also found me some making some... Uh, romantic, as uh, a stupid of them, go for the ones that are useful. And I'm not saying we should we should increase unto Rome as no, we increase unto godliness, not unto godliness. So please do that, and please remember to always drink um, lots of clean water. I've told you about it in 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 sufficient quantity. And then please, um, why may I advise you to also take a lot of fruits and vegetables? Be careful of these things, and in all, never forget to pray over this food you eat, the fruits. The vegetables, whatever they are, always sanctify them. It tells us every creature is good if it is sanctified. So it's only as good as we sanctify it. Don't forget that. It said every creature of God is good not to be refused if it is sanctified, okay? So let's sanctify. All it says for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. So learn to sanctify everything you eat. That's the only way you can activate the shall eat deadly, deadly they shall not hurt them. Okay? It is as you sanctify what you take in that you activate the scripture where Jesus says, um, you shall take deadly things, shall not hurt you. Okay, Mark 16. So please, learn to always sanctify your water, your bread, everything. He says, shall bless your bread and your water. So learn to bless them. You say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this food. I receive it with thanksgiving. It shall be health in my body. It shall be, it shall be strength for service. I declare it sanctified by your spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And Father, I ask that out of your uh, beneficence, you provide for those who have nothing, humans and animals alike, that, that many thanks will be read down to your name. In Jesus' name, amen. You can choose to blow on it if you want to. Because I, had, I got a video days ago of how um, certain of these um, uh, abokis, if, you, if you're foreign, you don't know them. Okay, they are, check the Google, go check Google of aboki even. This, Northerners who are selling fruits had decided um, burying and soaking fruits in gutters to hasten the ripening process. I got a video. I was shocked to my inward man. <laughs> I couldn't believe it that these things happen. <laughs> they soak oranges. And, and God has our homes of devils, germs of the wicked types as you find them. And so you're actually giving gems something to infest that you said to mankind. Sometimes they use, they use um, this, uh, what they call, um, kabat. What's the, what's the name in chemistry now? You're not sure what the name of Kabbalah is in chemistry. It's okay. <laughs> they used to ripen things. Those things are cancerous. Cancerous. Then in the Western world, you find they use some preservatives that are killers. And you eat these things thinking you are enjoying. No, no, you are shortening your days. It's, listen, you have to understand that Satan didn't just, it's not only fighting the church. It's fighting creation. And one of the ways Satan is destroying creation is through this, uh, the use of preservatives in foods. Spread of cancer. Satan. 
how you put something very cancerous into somebody's food. They use lead, lead laden things to preserve things. So please, I'm asking you to always pray. No matter how hungry you are, if you stand up before you remember, bless and say, Lord, even to the one that I've taken in, declare sanctified. You have said we shall not bring forth for trouble, Lord. I've taught you how to pray on food now. So if you didn't know how to pray on food, you're always praying, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, I cancel, I remove. No need for canceling now. Just pray about it. I've taught you now. Amen. So as you eat that food, it will be hurting your body. Don't forget that. You take, take, there are those who don't drink water at all. They said they, they want the food to, 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 to spread through their mouth. I don't know what that means. It's a mystery. Take a lot of clean water. Even the water you buy, if you know where they produce some of these things, you also provide the water. And in doing that, the Holy Ghost will destroy the germs. I'm telling you. Because when you do that, you, God's anger is stirred against those things. So you take a lot of that clean water, take fruits occasionally, eat healthy, you know, and make sure you, you give the food some time to, di to digest before you go to bed. Otherwise, you'll be, you'll be, you'll be um, giving visa to, to diabetes. If after eating, you just sleep. Because the body won't be able to break it down. And so in, in the process, you find you start weakening your, the transport system, your body organs. So don't, don't allow diabetics. So you eat and give it time to. Don't just sit up and say, I wait for three hours. Do something to. You have to do something to break it down. Otherwise, if you can't do other then eat something light that can digest easily at night. Eat heavy breakfast, heavy uh, lunch, and then light dinner. Maybe a slice of apple. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, maybe two leaves of uh, lettuce. For rest. <laughs> I know that, that, that you will disobey. Very well. well it's, not, it's not an instruction, so you can't disobey it. It's just a suggestion. Hallelujah. All right, so keep flying in life and keep reigning mightily. Still, we see, keep reigning in life. God bless you. It's time to weaponize. I command the sickness to go right now. I command the weakness to go right now. I command the limitation to leave right now. I command the confusion to go right now. I call their names and I call them George. I declare them George right now. And I command the wrath of God against your limitations, your struggles, your fears, your doubts, your unbelief, your captivities, your bondage, whatever they are. Poverty, lack, insufficiency, lack of job, loss of opportunities. I command an end to your singlehood. Right now, it's time to be united with, your, with the man of God's dream, the woman of God's dream for your life. Right now, I command doors to open for you right now. I command miracles to begin to come in right now. I command the fullness of the blessings into your life right now. Right now. Receive over and above miracles to become signs and wonders in the earth because it has been written of me and my children that the Lord has given to me we are for signs and for wonders now receive all of God to be a sign and a wonder in the earth right now right now not tomorrow right now by the power of the Holy Ghost by the authority of Jesus in the name of Jesus I command the things that are responsible for delaying your life to go. I pronounce them broken to pieces. Right now. In the name of Jesus. I rebuke Satan and all hell concerning you. I speak the wrath of God. Against the things that have struggled with your victory. Your success, your happiness, your health. Right now. For as the Lord said to Moses, <laughs> this is specific. This is coming right now. For as the Lord said to Moses, those who seek your life are dead, I declare. The things that seek your success, that stand away from your success, prosperity, abundance, your marriage, your relationship, your jobs, your finances, your effectiveness, in soul winning, making disciples, in giving you all for God, effectiveness in life, I declare to you by the Spirit of God, they are dead. 
now the habits the bad ones are dead i'm telling you this is a a, a, a word of prophecy for you it's a rhema for you right now the headache is dead the cancer is dead the diabetes is dead it's dead people of god this is coming from the lord right now the diabetes is dead the disease is dead. The affliction is dead. Thus says the Lord, the things that seek you, that are not of God, are dead. The things that hold you down, that beset you, that make you stagnant, are dead. Your fears are dead. Ah, death is dead. Hell is dead. Say the Lord. Listen, I'm telling you this. This is so strong. This is a thought, says the Lord. Your confusion dead. Whatever is in your life is in your body. Whatever it is in your body, in your life, in your spirit, in your soul, whatever it is that is not consistent with the glory of God for your life, for says the Lord, it is dead. Look to your right prophetically. Just open your eyes. Look to your right. Look to your left. You can look around you if it's possible. And I'm telling you right now, you cannot find them anymore. Because they are dead. They have been swallowed up of the power of the Holy Ghost. Up, up until now, the Lord gave you victories in measures. But this time, they are dead. For a life of constant victory. Constant triumph. And now, blessed be God, who leads you in constant triumph. To him be all the praise. Lift your hands towards heaven and give him praise. Lift your hands and give him praise. Oh, Sheila, ba 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 Kashida. We give you praise. to your deliverance. Thus, he craftily walks through the corrupt and putrefying culture of the world with its enchanting nature to enslave you. However, our in his virtuoso way of a teacher opens us up to these rules, principles and values. You shall in effect become the ideal citizen of God's kingdom, the embodiment of God's power. Jesus said, the amount of meditation you give to the word, to that same essence, to that same degree, virtue, revelation, insight shall be multiplied to you. When you hear the word of God, what really happens to you is that you are inspired, challenged, motivated, and refreshed. The blessing begins in the doing of the word. So the blessing of the word of God is activated by doing the word. It says, be not hear us only deceiving your own selves. James chapter 1 22 to 25. Be not hearers of the word, but doers of the word. So I, I challenge you to begin to practice the word. And Jesus said, when you do his word, say, I am my father, we come, I will make our bold with you. You want, it, you want God to, our, to make his bold with you? Yes, start to practice God's word. Meditate it. Because to practice the word of God, you have to, you have to understand it. To understand the word of God, you have to meditate it. And you know, meditation must be intentional. It doesn't happen by accident. So you meditate the word to understand it. As you understand, you practice. You practice it, you activate the blessing. It says the word of God is life to those who find it. Jesus said the amount of meditation, hallelujah, the amount of meditation you give to the word to that same essence, to that same degree, virtue, 
Revelation, insight shall be multiplied to you. As you meditate it, insight is given to you. And through that insight you receive of God's word, you practice it. And you find you start having uncommon results in life. You know, we are not of them that just hear the word of God. We are of them that understand the things that belong to our peace and give performance to them. You want the word of God to be life to you. Then there are things you must do. Number one, he says, my son, pay attention to my word. You must pay attention to it. Number two, he says, incline your ears to my saying. You must incline your ears to the sayings of God's word. Number three, he says, keep them in the midst of your eyes. And then he says, number four, let them not depart from your heart. Why? He says, when you do these things, it shall become life to you. So when you want the word of God to become life, rather than just letter, you must do this for things.